to Chilopedia. This is Maxim. You just heard me to play this Datsaur Etude number 18. Now I'm going to share with you a few tips how to work on that. You heard me in a faster tempo. In case you don't want to hear this lesson, you can skip it and go directly to my playthrough of this etude in a slower tempo quarter note 60. Just follow the timestamp in the description. Are you still here? Great! Now let's talk about the way to work on this etude. First of all, you see so many dots at the beginning and it has the word simile, which in Italian means the same. So that's our suggestion is to play the whole etude off stream, spiccato. Spiccato is the bow stroke which is hard to achieve. However, once you master that, you will be playing it without even thinking how you should execute it. The best way to practice is to work on this etude in a slower tempo, so you have no problem with your left hand, and then gradually increase the tempo. You will need to reach the certain speed for your bow to start bouncing off the string. However, you don't have to wait long to try to do it. You can actually just play the same note. Let's say we will play F on the D string. And you start with the bow stroke on the string, detaché, and then gradually increase the speed until you will feel the bow will start bouncing off. It's very important in this exercise to stay in the lower part of the bow, where bow can bounce off with ease. Uh, you know where the balance point of the bow is? If you try to do it this way, your fingers will definitely meet where the balance point is. Well, be careful when you do that. I don't want you to drop the bow on the cello. You have to make sure that you are using very little amount of the bow. Because if you use, say, quarter of the bow, no matter how hard you will try, the bow will never bounce off. Or if it will, the sound will never be clear. It's very important, and I will repeat it again, to play in the balance point of the bow, somewhere here, and to use very little bow. Yet another thing to pay attention is that your wrist is relaxed. You need to have it in a higher position so your fingers are flexible. And when you are playing spiccato, you mainly use rotation of your wrist. You are not using your elbow. The bigger part of your bow arm cannot move fast. And if you try to play something like that, you will not achieve a good result. Make sure that you are open to experimentation. What I mean is that we all different. We have different hands. Our cellos and especially bowls are different. And the way distribution of your bowl might be completely different compared to my bowl. So, when somebody tells you, you must play spiccato here or there, well, follow that advice but also make sure that you try slightly different points of the bowl. And only after you try it, then you will find out what works the best for you. 
For instance, you might try to play a bit closer to the frog. The result might be that you will get a bit harsher, louder sound. But then you will notice that your bow will bounce off from the string in much more reliable way. If you move closer to the middle of the bow, you might hear much lighter sound, but you will lose some strength of the bow stroke. And one more thing, you might be tempted to make a bow to bounce off the string by simply dropping it like this. It might seem to be a good idea at first, but that's wrong technique. Why? You will never get reliable bounce off of the first note if you just drop the bow. So, you will get much better control if, even for the split of the second, you will put the bow on the string and then you start the motion of the right hand. So, those are ideas for you to think about, to try and to see what works and what doesn't. Make sure you give yourself time. This bow stroke never comes right away. But once you master it, you will be really proud of yourself as a good cellist. Another important thing you will have to work on playing this etude is string crossings. When you have to go from one string to another back and forth many times. When you do that, you cannot use your elbow much. Again, moving from one string to another in a faster tempo is impossible if you use larger parts of your bow arm. And your elbow will never be able to keep up with the speed of those notes. So, make sure that you pay attention. For instance, when we play the fifth line of the second page, this spot, we will have to pay a lot of attention to wrist flexibility. Let me show it to you in a slower tempo. forget to pay attention to the wrist, you will end up playing this way. And in a slower tempo, you probably can move your elbow that fast, but you will never be able to increase tempo much faster than I just played for you. Are you still here? Well, let's actually make an extra step and learn to play this etude with different bowings. After you will go over all of those exercises, it will be much easier for you to play this etude one note per bow in a faster tempo. I will show it to you one by one. The first suggestion is to play two notes per bow, like this. definitely help you to pay attention to string crossings because now when you move from one string to another very often you will have to connect it to play it on the same bow. The second suggestion four notes per bow is also extremely helpful.
And then when you work enough on that, you could try even eight notes per bow. Just make sure that you are not spending too much of the bow at the beginning of each bow stroke. Otherwise, you will not have enough bow left for the last few notes. Now, after that, you will learn to play with very tricky bowings. Three notes connected and one separate. Three notes down, one note up. When you will play this up bow, just one note, you will have to lift the bow to return to the starting point. So you will play it this way. The next option is one note down bow and three notes up bow. Actually, this one is a bit easier because this one note down bow you can play using way more bow and it will sound louder and it's very appropriate to do so since it's beginning of the beat. Now the last two options. The first one is six notes connected and two notes separate. When you will play six notes, you will use the whole bow and two separate notes will happen at the tip of the bow and then after that at the frog. Let me show it to you. Last option, opposite way. First you play two separate notes using very little bow and then you will play six notes using the whole bow. And now let me play this etude for you in slow tempo, quarter note 60. I will play it on the string, detache. I will not force the bow to bounce off the string. Remember, in slower tempo we are working on the clarity in the left hand. So then you can play faster without thinking much about the left hand and try to get it spiccato off the string.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something useful and you will be ready to work on other wonderful etudes by Datsauer. Come back, see you soon.